Brandon Johnson is facing off against Paul Vallis in Chicago's mayoral runoff election in April. Both candidates advanced after beating Mayor Lori Lightfoot the first time in four decades that an incumbent Chicago mayor has not been reelected. Johnson and Vallis have extremely different perspectives on how to move Chicago forward, but these two topics will likely dominate their upcoming campaigns, public safety and education. And joining me now is Chicago mayoral candidate Brandon Johnson, who serves on the Cook County Board of Commissioners. Commissioner, uh, welcome to the Saturday show. So I'm going to ask you the question I ask everybody running for office who comes on this show. Why are you running? Yeah, thanks for having me. Good morning, Jonathan. You know, over 15 years ago, I started um, my teaching career, which is the best job that I've ever had, uh, teaching middle school um, in Cabrini Green, USA, uh, people around the world, um, I'm sure, are familiar with Cabrini Green because it really captures the essence of the city of Chicago. Because my students woke up every single morning, and from their back windows, they could see one of the wealthiest neighborhoods in the entire city, downtown. Um, but out of the front windows, uh, bulldozers stared them down every morning, preparing to destroy their public housing. And that's really what the economy in the city of Chicago has consisted of, where families wake up every day uh, chasing down this economy that's behind them, while everything in front of them is crumbling. And I'm running to become the next mayor of the city of Chicago to put an end to this tale of two cities and usher in a better, stronger, safer Chicago with one story for one Chicago. Mm -hmm. And so crime has dominated the campaign so far. Um, it, you know, it's a huge issue in Chicago. Crime rate has uh, increased 41 percent from 2021 to 2022. In your campaign ad, which we part of it we showed, you mentioned safer communities as one of your uh, the pillars of your campaign. Um, in the past, you've mentioned that you would reduce police funding or at least reallocate it to areas where it's needed. Uh, I just right here, right now, what is your plan to bring crime down in Chicago? Tell folks who might be watching in Chicago what you're going to do to make Chicago safe. Yeah, thank you. You know, look, my wife and I, we, we've been married for, for almost 25 years in June, and we're raising three children on the west side of Chicago, an uh, eight-year-old, a 10-year-old, and a 15-year-old. And no one has more of an incentive in this race uh, for the city of Chicago to be safer than me, because I'm raising my family in the Austin community, one of the largest concentration of black uh, folks anywhere in the world. And it's a beautiful community, but it is one of the more violent neighborhoods. In fact, it um, is either one or two every single year, the most violent neighborhood in the city of Chicago. And that's why my public safety plan is a comprehensive plan, and it's an investment plan. Uh, we're going to promote 200 more detectives within the rank and file uh, to make sure that we are actually solving crime because we're not doing that. We're also going to spend money to make sure that we are implementing the consent decree with expediency. Conservatively, that's about $50 million to make sure we're implementing that. But we're also going to make sure that we're doing things that help reduce violence by hiring young people. I'm going to double the amount of young people that we hire. And we're not just going to do it for summer programs. We're going to do it for uh, year round. Uh, because there is a direct correlation between youth employment and violence reduction. We're going to make sure that we're providing mental health services. Um, an alternative to 911, almost 40 percent, Jonathan, of the 911 calls are mental health crises calls. And so we're putting too much pressure on law enforcement. We're asking uh, police, officers, police officers to behave as social workers, much like we put too much responsibility on teachers. By having mental health responders show up on the front line, it frees up law enforcement to actually deal with the more violent, serious crime. And so my plan is very much comprehensive. It is very much a serious problem. And again, as I, as I indicated, and it's not just in my neighborhood, though I'm impacted by it the most, my wife and I are with our three children, but this is something that we're experiencing all over the city of Chicago. And finally, we have to do what safe American cities do around the country. They invest in people. And so my public safety plan gets at the root causes, deals with the immediate crisis, and we make sure that we actually invest in people. Let's talk about your opponent, Paul Vallis, the former uh, head of the Chicago Public Schools. At the moment, he is leading with 33 percent of the vote, 33 uh, percent of the votes. How do you plan to chip away at his support? Yeah, so, look, I'm an organizer as well. Um, as, as a public school teacher, I moved into organizing. And what's awesome and what's unique about our candidacy it's a multicultural, multi-generational movement 
that has propelled me into this to this space. And there are individuals who are fighting for education justice, for housing justice, for climate justice. Again, I'm the only person in, in the first round to have double digits in every geographical area. And so the way we chip at it is that we continue to tell the truth to the people of Chicago. The truth of the matter is, everywhere Paul Vallis has been in charge of the finances, he has destroyed those economies. Uh, in the 1990s, when I was in high school, he was in charge of budgeting. At that time, his budgetary schemes that have caused the economic crisis that we're living in right now, we also had a murder rate of well over 900 people, uh, the time in which consistently, year after year in the 90s, when he was in charge, uh, when he was in charge of the budget um, in Philadelphia, uh, he ruined that economy. New Orleans, he ruined it there. The decline and the loss of black educators, the working people have been um, uh, deeply impacted by his failures. Uh, Bridgeport, uh, he comes back to Chicago, one of the uh, major uh, public colleges in the city of Chicago, Chicago State. Uh, he was ran out of there. Everywhere uh, he has been in charge, he has left a trail of tears. And we cannot go back to the old style of politics that have left families behind. Um, that's why I believe and I'm confident that I'll run this city in the most equitable way because we're speaking to people across the city, whether you live in the, on the north side of Chicago, the south, southwest, southeast, wherever you live in the city of Chicago, you deserve a better, stronger, safer one. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to deliver that as mayor of the city of Chicago. And Commissioner Johnson, we got to go, but what's your website? Where can people find your campaign? Go to brandonforchicago.com. We've had over 600 people already sign up for, uh, for volunteers, and we have hundreds of donors across the country. Mm -hmm. um, and so in order to elect a progressive Democrat, to the fifth floor of the city of Chicago, maximum people that join us. Again, brandonforchicago.com.